Hey there, Knicks fans. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, goodness gracious. Did not expect to be coming on doing a live stream uh, tonight on Tuesday. Two hours, two days, excuse me, not two hours, two days before free agency um, ostensibly begins. We know that is not the case. Uh, how you doing? It's your boy, John of the Macri, with you for uh, an emergency live stream to discuss a night which um well i haven't i haven't felt quite this way in oh let's go back a little bit uh for those old heads out there i believe the year was 2008 uh when donnie walsh uh not not necessarily uh, or he wasn't even in the job for that long at, at this point um it was i i it was a, a, maybe a dozen games into the season, probably less. I forget the exact number. Uh, traded away uh, Jamal Crawford and Zach Randolph in, in one fell swoop to clear a bunch of cap space for a pursuit that would take place uh, roughly two years from then. That is not what is going on tonight because we are not two years away from what the Knicks are hoping to do. We are uh, two days away from what the Knicks not want to do, but appear certain that they are going to be able to do. And that, of course, is to bring aboard uh, Jalen Brunson, uh, the point guard, combo guard, whatever you want to call him, of the Dallas Mavericks, uh, son of New York assistant coach Rick Brunson, uh, represented by Sam Rose, son of Leon Rose. Uh, Leon Rose, of course, uh, former agent to Jalen Brunson, Leon Rose, of course, former agent to Rick Brunson. Uh, the family ties go deep here. And as we sit and we process what is going to be based on the numbers that are being bandied about, uh, the most significant, at least in terms of dollars, free agent signing. Hello, Jeremy Cohen. Hey, John. Uh, I was just saying, uh, as, as we prepare to analyze and, and think about and process the most significant free agent signing in terms of in terms of dollars, at least, that the New York Knicks uh, have ever made in their history, um, more than Mario Stoudemire, more than when they re-signed Alan Houston. Um, we'll see if this winds up being more than uh, Julius Randle got it. it, it it seems like it's headed to be more than four for 106, although we don't know. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe it won't. Um, look, this is the guy they wanted. Uh, I said it a few hours ago, and now with the moves of Noel and Alec Burks to the Detroit Pistons, for zero, <laughs> none, nada, first-round picks, Going back in that deal. Just some seconds and some good old fashioned. Oh, you could fold it. You could put it in your pocket. You could put it under your pillow. Cash, baby. <laughs> Rules everything around me and you and everybody else. Um, I don't know how to attack this first. Uh, the, the, the first thing I want to say, just this is a good trade that they made tonight um, in, in terms of what we knew they needed to do. We knew what they wanted to do for them to be able to unload this uh, Noel's money. And, you know, Burks, who I'm sure as has already been reported, the Pistons will try to flip and, and get an asset for uh, at some point. Probably. We'll, we'll see. Um, for, but, I mean, look, we've seen good players have to have assets attached to them when they're traded in this circumstance. When everybody and their mother knows the team trading them is trading them because they need to open up cap space today, right now. And oftentimes it means the value is a little bit lower. That being considered, I think the value is, is pretty good here. And um, why don't we start there? Uh, thoughts on the on the trade? God damn it, Leon. This, I said to my girlfriend tonight, I'm looking forward to having a night off. And then he pulls oh. this shit. Silly you. Yeah, silly me. Um, yeah, they did what they needed to do. And at this point, what's another couple more seconds? You know, at, 
the thing is, we still have time to figure out what their next plan is. I don't entirely know because they could theoretically create a giant traded player exception. Great tweet by you, by the way. Thank you. Um, Fantastic tweet by you. I appreciate that. So uh, basically, for those who maybe saw the tweet and maybe a little confused or you didn't see the tweet, uh, with the Kemba Walker deal, it hasn't been made official. So essentially what could happen is July 1st, they could finalize the deal. It's Burks, it's Kemba, and it's Noel going out. And the reason you you can ignore traded player exception with Jeremy Grant or anything that, that Detroit would have gotten because they'll have cap space. So they can renounce the traded player exception, create a boatload of cap space and absorb all three of those contracts. So um, the question then is, are the Knicks basically going to generate a traded player exception that Dallas can uh, use to trade Brunson into it? And then Brunson gets, or excuse me, then the Mavs get a, a traded player exception out of that. Or are the Knicks going to just flat out renounce the traded player exception, go under the salary cap and say to Dallas, screw you, we're signing Brunson and that's that. What's really fascinating to me is what the next steps are because, and and listen, I know we can have conversations about their value and all that, but, and I don't even know a lot of the stars that are on the market, so to speak, but here's the thing. The Knicks essentially have $23 million with Julius Randle. They have, it's 23.7, $23.8 million, $18 million going to Evan Fournier and $14.5 million going to Derek Rose. So, the prevailing question is, uh, let's see, it's 32.5, uh, 33 point. I'm not, you know, I'm just going to use Excel because it's a lot easier than on the fly. Well, Here's the I, point. They've got yeah. a lot of money they can use in a trade and they can add up to a max caliber player, whether they go for a max caliber player or if there's one that hits the market, honestly couldn't tell you. But, but to, that's, be, to, to yes. be clear, the if they keep a giant traded player exception, from Detroit, which would theoretically be enough to fit Jalen Brunson in. I, I shouldn't say theoretically. That would be enough to fit Jalen Brunson in. Yes. They they don't then get cap room in addition to that. That that is the move that they would make if they stay as an above the cap team. So it's not like they could they could have their cake and eat it too in that sense. I I, I think for me the more interesting thing here is like they it, it's very I Again, there are reports still coming out. Leon Rose could go and sign Jalen Brunson to a max contract with this with this salary cap space that could. he's opened up. It, could. It's, po- Just, it's possible. Yes. It's possible. It's only 30.5 million. It. That's where the max starts for him. And if he does that, I look, there will there will be people that will have things to say about that, about the notion of Jalen Brunson being a max player. I I don't know that that would diminish the accomplishment of getting Jalen Brunson that much for this reason. As we've been talking about for months on end, it's the amount of money you give to a guy is only really important if you're going to go ahead and try to move him. If they see Jalen Brunson as a foundational piece to, and look, if they if he's not a foundational piece of what they're doing moving forward, then this is a gross miscalculation. But if they're like, look, we want you to be here. We want you to be here, not for one year or two years, but for the entirety of your contract and be a part of whatever it is that we're going to do next. The money doesn't really matter unless they were planning to open up cap space, which, as you've been discussing at length over the last several days, that may be a path they take or they may take a completely different path in which they're going full in on we're going to trade for the next guy or guys that are going to fill out um, this roster. So, like, I'll say this. I trust this front office to this extent. If they're going big in terms of the money for Jalen Brunson, I don't I don't expect that to I don't expect that aspect of it to come back and bite them in the ass later on. Did I misstate anything there? No, I think that's totally fair. I guess the, the big question that I'm dealing with right now is look we don't know what the value was for alec burks on the market we know there was interest in their own well i understand that um there was a prevailing thought of like oh well the clippers don't have assets so they want a salary dump uh, they'll take on their noel and they'll get some sort of asset and they can use that 
And the reason it never made sense to me was, well, they're already paying in a godly amount in luxury taxes. And yeah, Steve Ballmer has a ton of money. He's the richest governor in the NBA. Yep. But I don't think he's looking to take on New Orleans Noel's $9 million contract in exchange for a first round pick, seconds, whatever it is. Yeah. Alec Burks had a lot of interest. It's been reported. There has been interest throughout. As so, he should. We saw it. He's Torian, a good player. Torian Prince, who's a worse player than Alec Burks, objectively speaking, just got a uh, two-year extension for eight, uh, $16 million. Alec Burks is essentially on a $10 million expiring contract. Right. So my prevailing question is, if Noel had even a sliver, a slither, sliver of value, even if it was just like, hey, we'll, we'll take... We'll just take him. Right, we'll just take him. If Alec Burks had any positive value, which it seemed that he did, why then would the Knicks go the opposite direction and then yep. add picks to either of those players to move them out. And the answer I feel like is the traded player exception, because the fact that it's going to Detroit, that's already taking Kemba Walker, that they're saying to the, it's not that these, it's not that these players, especially Burks don't have value. It's that the Pistons recognized or the Knicks recognized that they might want to get the traded player exception. That's large enough. And the Pistons said, well, um, cool, but you're also giving us $19 million. Like the benefit for them is they could take Burks, they could keep him or they could take Burks and they could flip him for a better asset. They are in a great situation. Yeah, but for the Knicks, it seems trade. like what's more valuable for, at this moment, this can all change, but at this moment, it seems that they have, might have more interest in creating a traded player exception for Jalen Brunson than they are for sending all these guys out and clearing cap space. Because if they wanted to do that, they would have found a higher bidder than just this. And if you're asking yourself, and then we're going to get to the super chats, because uh, thank you for everybody watching. We have a, a shit ton of people watching right now. Um, and we're going to get to all the super chats in a moment. Uh, I'm going to a attempt to summarize this, and then Jeremy's going to correct me if I fuck up. Um, if you're wondering why, what's the difference? Why care about trading Jalen Brunson into a traded player exception versus. Did we get some news? Yes. Uh, so ignore everything because James Edward III just said, and for those wondering, per sources, this is a separate deal, not part of the draft uh, day deal involving Detroit and New York. Interesting. So, and it's it's also interesting because even if the Knicks cleared Kemba Walker, the TPE they got for Kemba Walker, remember, you can't combine TPEs. They're no. separate entities. So theoretically speaking, then, I mean, all of that, what well, I just said goes up and spoke because – well, because they're not going to necessarily, unless they dump more salary and then hold on to the $19 million TPE, but then that doesn't. Well, I mean, hold on. Those, those two salaries do fit into the Jeremy Grant TPE if they want. This is the the chaos. You want to get nuts? The NBA. Listen, Let's get nuts. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Here's what this does, unless I'm mistaken. Um, if she, I'm, I'm literally, this is off the top of my head. I, th I think the math works here. If no, because the traded player exception go goes away. If you renounce it, if you if, get cap space, if you get cap space, yeah, okay. I was I was gonna concoct something with with Dejounte Murray, which I know is on a lot of people's mouths. Um, the only so way then, you would do that, just for what it's worth, is you do this deal, um, and then you would renounce Kemba, and then you'd have to send out more salary with less coming back to then, or you could do salary matching, like you could still. It's complicated. It, it's not clean. It's an well, ugly mess. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Could we're, We are going off the rails. Couldn't you stagnate the trades to get to get under the cap? No, no, no. You wouldn't be able to get it because once you get under the cap. No, to get under the cap and then sign Brunson um, and then that gets you over the cap and then execute the um noel and burks trades after the fact and then get the traded ex player exception you could do that right you could but then how are the knicks clearing enough cap space in order to sign brunson yeah because otherwise it's, again yeah. it's, it goes back to are they dumping evan fournier for no money are they dumping well Derek rose for no money so like, that's again get if evan if evan fournier is going back to dallas in the in a sign-in trade if you're just doing the Kemba salary dump and you're leaving the Noel and Burke salary dumps for later, create a traded player exception. Theoretically, you could do that in two separate transactions, right? It depends if the math works for the Fournier part. It probably doesn't it does. because if, if you're getting Brunson at a max, 
it might be closer with it might be close it, it might it you know, might be close we, let's we, go we, to the super we, chat because we're just at this point we're just <laughs> This is what People happens. To hear us folks, hear, hear folks, speak out loud this like is that. what happens when you look at this shit for two straight months, and you two look at these. Generous. It's conservative. I, oh my god! Can't you wait start to think of, of these machinations. All right, our first super chat, I believe, is from Mello from Toronto. Brock Aller is a madman. I think this move also means the Knicks are going to Knicks are going to do more after signing Brunson. But wow, I'm not mad at this at all. Yeah, I don't know how you can be mad at it. Um. I mean, if you hate Brunson and you think he's like a $12 million a year player, then you should be mad at it. But other than that, I, I don't know how you could be upset at this. Uh, I'll, say, I'll just say this quickly. It's yeah. more, I'm not mad at it because the direction was clear. It seems that from the reports and from like, they're continuing with what they should have done or what they were planning on doing. It, it's, yeah. un, it's, you know, continuing that process. The part that then irritates me is more talking about last off season and how right and and we'll we'll have an in memoriam for last off season when we have more details or maybe maybe you I'll know what last off tomorrow. season cost them but, six second round picks and one of them is a fake second round pick because one of the picks that just went to detroit in this deal is not a real second round pick plus yes plus swapping from 13 to the 2025 20, bucks pick which can be which is a mystery box but well not it's, it it's wasn't not really it's not like you're hemorrhaging assets because again, like it's important, but it's not because you can still buy second round picks. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not like I'm not super upset about it or anything like that. It's more just like if hindsight's 2020, you know, like the whole point for me was okay, you have Alec Burks, you, you are able to turn him into something that helps you down the line, not what is essentially neutral. Because to me, neutral is like plus or minus one second round pick. Yeah. Um, uh, let's say this. Lots of teams uh, over the course of NBA history have screwed up and then had to get out of those screw ups to do the thing that they want to do. And most of the time it costs them a lot more than what it costs the Knicks. Uh, Duran visual variant. Tell Jeremy to get on here. We need to see all the PPT options. Duran, I got a job like <laughs> I, I got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> and then I got cream after that. Maybe another time. But but I like where your head's at next time. Oh, and here we go. Our first, mm. maybe our, our only, but or definitely our first from Robert Cross. First time, long time, John. Should I be excited that Nick's core will now feature RJ, IQ, OB, uh, O, and Brunson? Hashtag 53 wins. I mean, yeah, that's 100%. I think, I think the biggest question for me right now revolves around Randall. And I don't want to turn this into a Randall centric live stream because there's no reason to, but like, it is very clear tonight that this organization is eminently comfortable making massive waves in terms of upending this roster. Uh, any any um, attachments to any play, like throw that out the window. That's a separate conversation to whether they find good value, whether they find a new home for Julius Randle, all those things. Um, that's what I'm wondering, Jeremy. Well, I feel like two things kind of come to light. Number one, the idea that the front office is obsessed with winning deals. This was not a winning deal unless your ultimate goal is cap space, which it was, but like. It's a fair you, deal. It's, it's an sure. objectively fair value deal. Sure. But then, and again, I, I don't want to rag on the, the Kemba part. I, I'm, I'm fine with it. It's more just like th there is a perception that the front office keeps holding out for the right deal. Almost like Danny Ainge. I also can't help. But wonder with the deadline, if they had moved Burks and Noel and Cam, were they better suited doing it then versus now? I think they there's still an have argument. Cam. They for now, like that's the thing. Robert is saying, should I be excited about RJ, IQ, Obi, and Brunson? And I'm just sitting here thinking, I hope all of them are still on the team. I hope Brunson. I mean, it seems like Brunson's gonna be on the team, but like, and I'm, I don't. I'm not trying to spread fear or fear. I'm just I'm being a little facetious here, just in the sense of like we just don't know what the next steps are. Other than Brunson, we don't. Um, but uh, as of right now, all, uh, Knicks fans, all the guys that you like are going to get to play because the roster just got very thinned out. Uh, Forgotten NYC says, hoping we could somehow get Murray too. I'd cry. I mean, look, I, I someone reached out to me earlier. Uh, I, I don't want to put this too bluntly, but I, I don't think this is unfair to say. If the Knicks want to draft Murray, they could go get the Jonathan Murray. I, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. It's a matter of the price. 
and do they want to pay what the Spurs want in terms of picks? And it seems like the talk with Atlanta is three firsts. Now, is that two Atlanta firsts and this, the Hornets pick that we traded them for Cam Reddish? Is it three Atlanta firsts? What are the protections? Like, you don't know what the Spurs would need to let go of DeJounte Murray. So I, it's an unknown right now. It is. And, you know, Mark Stein did clarify, and he meant more of like not and. The Knicks are looking or in the event that Brunson doesn't work. It feels to me like if the whole point with Brunson wanting to leave Dallas to come to New York to be the point guard, to have the ball in his hands a lot more, to lead the offense, that bringing Murray into the fold makes a little bit less sense as well. Um, and then it comes down to the asset play of is that something that they would really want i um to again he's a good player but i just don't think that brunson and murray is necessarily the tandem that they had in mind um, especially i mean from a floor spacing perspective it's I, it, it would great. surprise me um, it would surprise me it would, it would surprise me as well yeah i again I, I wouldn't rule it out those are two i'll say i'm gonna put on my uh uh day, daytime talk show radio drive time talking talking head uh hat um they're both dogs jeremy with a with a w with a capital w it's D- lowercase D-A-W-G. d-a yep. no lowercase d-a uh, capital w ah uh, yes g-s no but like i could see them being enamored with that backcourt from that perspective it, it it doesn't provide you with the spacing you want um Boy, talk about two wet, uh, wet dreams for Tibbs. Guys that just drive, drive, and drive some more. Um, we'll see. Um, we'll get excited about Murray if and when the time comes. Mr. Downtone, can the $30 million of space be for Brunson and DeJounte? No, it's it's not enough money for, for both of them. That's what I was trying to figure out before, if there was something clearly that I was missing that, that out, you know, would... If they're going to trade for DeJounte Murray at this point, it would seem that it would be a straight-up uh, swap involving Evan Fournier's contract and then whatever the picks are, unless I'm missing something, but that would seem to be it. Just Andrew, re- just real quick, read his name again, Mr. You said down tone. It's downtown. Is that how you, is that it? I would, I would, I just, I want to get his name right. Thank you for the contribution, Mr. Downtown. I think I'm correct me in the chat. If I'm, wrong. I'm sure it's downtown. probably down town. That would make yes. more sense than down tone. Yes. There you go. That's how I read it. I stick by my stick. I okay. Stick it. Maybe it's Mr. Downton. Miss Downton. That makes a lot more. You know sense. what? Now it's Mr. Downton, mm-hmm. even if yes. it isn't. So there you it's go. Mr. Downtown. I would down Abbey. Um, I don't know where we were talking about. Uh, SB gorilla. Good day to be a Knicks fan. Seems like things are starting to make sense. I feel like Randall is going to be gone. RJ Brunson and Randall is a clunky fit. Um, I'll stay with that for half a second. I, I wrote about that two months ago when I was, I'm, in the midst of all this craziness was, was preparing an article for tomorrow or a newsletter for tomorrow. Have fun. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Uh, I don't love those three guys together on the court. It, it, you know, Jalen Brunson needs space, uh, or, or let me rephrase that. Jalen Brunson operated with a lot of space in Dallas. Um, they call it spread, pick and roll for a reason. He got to run that offense when he was out there. Um, without Luca, especially, and the Knicks, if Randall's still on the team, I just I don't see that. I, which is why part of me is like, is there another move coming involving Randall? But which and and credit to you, man, you've been spitballing this for you. You've been saying for months. I, I just I, again, I I I hear both of you the cynical side of like. I'll believe it when he's gone. I agree, but that's why just, I was about to say hundred percent, hundred percent. But there's just something about listen, if there's a way, there is not a unification for Brunson, and there won't be, and that's fine. Fans can disagree. That's that's totally cool. But it seems like one of the things that unifies the majority of a fan base that is very wide reaching and incredibly large, and it's it's Julius Randle, and it's the thought of if you remove Julius Randle, if you're the front office. What does that do? Does that buy you time? I think it would because it would show a clear investment in OB, and that's what a lot of people want. So uh, we'll see. I, I, again, if he, if he's traded this offseason, then the whole point of re-signing him is validated. But we'll get into that if he is traded. And if he's not, we'll explain why it doesn't necessarily impact things. Man. 
I'm not even gonna say if they found a way to move it. My goodness, uh, Jessica, our girl Jessica. I really hope they unload Randall. I, I, I. What are the odds? This is the next comment. I really hope they unload Randall in whatever deals they wield the remainder of the week. Fingers, fingers, Robert crossed. Fifty hashtag fifty three trades. Love it. At this rate, we might we might get to fifty three trades in this offseason. Um, again, I'll I'll believe it when I see it. I hope you're right, Jeremy. Uh, Kevin Danishevsky, what's going on, Kev? Funny, I was just making my way through the Jeremy Cohen plan as my as the notifications hit my phone. If not, Murray, what's the move for this team post Jalen Brunson? That's my other biggest question because, again, with the amount of cap space they opened up, sh- yes, this could just be give Brunson the max or or start him at his maximum first year annual salary, and then maybe have this, uh, you know, going down five percent after that. And then, you know, ink uh, Jericho Sims to a, a generous little little a big league contract. It doesn't pass the smell test for me, Jeremy. Sums up. Sums yeah. up. I just can't quite put my finger on it at this moment, but something does not pass the smell test. You're right, I, John. Honestly, I, 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 Kevin, I feel bad saying this because I, 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 you deserve a better answer than this. I, if it's, and again, the, here's the weird part. And that's why I went off on that little tangent to start the start the live stream. The the money shouldn't matter where Murray is concerned. The the Murray thing, I I'm pretty sure is going to come down to draft picks. Again, I, I'm it's entirely possible I'm missing something. So I don't think it comes down to that unless there is another move coming here that we're just you know still still waiting. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I wish I had an answer for you. I don't have one right now. Um, we'll, we'll find out soon enough, though, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Alec, oh, wait, hold on. I, I can't see who this is from. Kevin Danishevsky. Um, are, are you not able to see on the screen that I have them pinned? No. Oh, no. wait. Oh, yeah, there we go. There. there you go. Oh, wait, you're putting them right up. <laughs> yes. I am oh, putting that's, them that's really on nice the screen. of you. Yes, you're welcome. Oh, what it's a nice producer. producer you are. Nicely produced. There you yeah. go. Kevin Danishevsky, also Alec Burks, was da- damn good Nick. Thank you, AB. Man, I've been talking here for 20 minutes. I haven't given eulogized. Alec Burks his flowers. You haven't eulogized Alec Burks, no. I'll tell you this. Unlike most Nick fans, when I think of Alec Burks, I'm going to have fond memories. That dude was a good Nick. And he get, he, he's going to leave with a shitty reputation, and there's going to be many people who are going to read their news feed tonight or tomorrow morning you're going to be see it and they're, they're not even going to care about any of the caps stuff they're just going to be like oh thank god we don't have to ever watch alec burks play point guard, guard and you know what maybe maybe there is a little bit of this that is the front as we've been saying since january the front office you know uh preventing tom Thibodeau from injuring himself or this team anymore I, I you know but Alec Brooks is a good player and and that that's a it's tough that he's gonna go out that way that's all I agree he's not a point guard and that's fine a lot of no. players aren't point guards but he's a really <laughs> great shooter and does a lot of nice things he's just just a very good glue guy and if Detroit does indeed flip him then I expect them to get something decent for him and oh it's just that's the nature of doing business as the middle agent Good for them uh, if they if they pull it off. I will I will be watching the Pistons this year, not for Noah's Noel. Well. Um, Robert for the second Cross. round pick, of course. <laughs> Robert Cross with another one. This question is for Cutlets, the capologist. How would you grade Leon's offseason thus far? Consider the scale to be Alfred Payton to to Jalen Brunson. I mean, it's literally Jalen Brunson, Robert. Like, it's literally Jalen Brunson. That's the so yes, I'm gonna go with Jalen Brunson. It's not Alfred Payton. We're we're a million miles away from Alfred Payton. Thankfully. Yeah. Uh Dom Cappuccini. What's going on, Dom? Gonna miss A B. John, you called your shot on Brunson two years ago. Did I? Uh, okay. I'll I know that. I did. I, I have been on the Brunson train for a long time. I can't wait if Brunson does indeed sign to uh to circle back to my subconscious sweet a uh, tweet for when Leon incepted his way into my dreams and told me this was gonna happen. So uh, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. I don't remember what the hell I said, but I'll, I'll take credit. Um, it, it's about to be inevitable. How does it finally feel? I mean, 
I, it, you know, it's going to be tough because I, I try to brush. I try to brush off all the LOL Nick stuff. Oh, you know, I'm human. I bleed, Jeremy. You do. I, I, it's my skin is not metal. I don't have adamantium bones, or or bo- excuse me, bones coated with adamantium. Um, I hurt. So when the barbs and arrows come uh, about, oh, the Knicks are going to spend you know, a hundred plus million dollars on a on a backup point guard. You know, it's it's going to sting a little bit, but at the same time, look, Jalen Brunson, I think by the time the playoffs are over, earned universal respect around the league. And again, you may not love him. You may not think that he's one of the best two players on a team that could really contend for anything. And that's fine. But like, there's a dude that the Mavs wanted. They absolutely wanted. And I think there would have been a market for it. Was a, we heard that there was a market for for with Detroit. I would have, again, we, I, I, we have, it hasn't signed officially yet, but we're going on that assumption. Um, like it's a good basketball player, and the Knicks got him. And I know they got him because his entire fucking family and extended family works for the team. But you know what? I don't give a shit. It feels good. It feels good. And I'm letting it feel good. You said exactly on the Fred Katz podcast what I was feeling. When's the last time? Again, I, I'm putting the cart before the horse. I recognize that. But yeah. if the Knicks do get Jalen Brunson, when's the last time plan A worked out for the Knicks? And I don't mean that as in down the line. Look, we, we can figure out down the line when down the line arrives. But that that was their intention. And like, if I can just read the next Super Chat comment. That's what I was going to say. For Brian Benson, with this whole thing. Signing your God sent to a max isn't an accomplishment. I hear that. I understand, but it's not just his godson. He's a good player. He's a really good player. It's just, how do you get to the next step? And to me, Jalen Brunson is very much this next step. He may not be signed to the max. I understand it's a large contract and he has to earn it. If it was given to him, he has to earn it, but he's also someone who at every step of his career has proved himself further. And it's the sort of thing where there's no player. I shouldn't say no player. Cause again, who knows what, what the Knicks are thinking, but it feels at this moment that realistically there is no player who is on the market who's going to raise the Knicks into contention. Even DeJounte Murray, if you love him, he's not going to raise the Knicks up several notches to the point where they are a realistic contender. And so if, like, if you're not going to find that, what are you going to do? You do nothing? You're not going to tank. Even if you want the Knicks to tank, it's not going to happen. That's... And whether you want them to do it or not, I get it. But in year three of a regime, they're not going to say, hey, let's perfect, let's purposely pivot to even worse than last season, because I'm sure that'll go all over great. And so, you know, like, again, you can think of the thrifting of like a Tyus Jones type player. The Knicks have been missing a really good point guard for no. how many years? Stop. Stop. How many it. times we've talked about the cap space and, and the salary cap and it's changing. And again, if, you, if you're not on board with Jalen Brunson, I get it. But I also don't because it just it all depends on how the money shakes out and the other moves. So stop I'll hold with, off on the rest of it till later. Stop with the tie. I'm not saying you stop with yeah. the Tyus Jones thing. Just stop. It's Tyus Jones had a 16 usage rate last year. And I went because I'm a crazy person. I went through the games that he played without the without um, John Morant this year. And you know what happened to his usage rate? It went down when it was lower when John Morant wasn't on on the active roster it's a 16 usage rate it's in the bottom third of all point guards in the league Jalen Brunson when uh he didn't play with Luka Doncic this year had a 27 point something usage rate I forget what the decimal point is it's, uh equivalent to RJ Barrett um a hair below Julius Randle you, you 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 pay for production in the NBA you don't pay for theory you don't pay for plus minus you pay for production um Jalen Brunson literally any way you want to look at it. it gives you production so you know yes the godson the family relationships I, I i get that all of that and i i'm sympathetic towards it it's a real thing and it, it needs to be part of this conversation but you know the, the next getting a good player here um jeremy e have to respect the front office that knows how to cut bait and capitalize when opportunity presents itself is julius the next to go oh well your, your lips to god's ears jeremy i hope so 
Um, Are you talking to me or to Jeremy E? Uh, J- Jeremy E or Jeremy C, one or the other. SB Gorilla, mark my words. Brunson, RJ, Bridges, Obi, and Mitch. Man, I mm. Evan and Cam is Hornets and Randall. Evan and Cam is Hornets? On the uh, Hornets, sure. Uh, and Randall in a three-way trade to Dallas. What do you guys think? Can it work? Uh, Evan and Cam to the Hornets. Miles Bridges to the Knicks and Randall to the Mavs. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know about that one. Why do you uh, think this is complicated? The three worst words in the English dictionary. <laughs> Face your compensation. It's a challenge. Um, I'm just, uh, this is a great question. I'm just going to respectfully say no, because I don't know if my brain can handle any more of that thinking. So and, and Mitch Kupchak also today in his presser said, we want to keep miles. Yeah. He's not going to. I don't. At least we don't think so. The impression I got was him basically saying, "Let me get in front of here because uh, I don't want Miles Bridges to get any other offers that would make it higher." Because you know, and here's the other thing: if you're the Pistons, you're probably not going after Bridges, right? Oh, what's that? Chris Haynes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Jeez. All right. So let's. Read oh, it out loud. this now became a Jalen Brunson live stream. Wow. Go ahead, yes, John. It did. Wait, it became a Jalen Brunson. <laughs> this was a Nerlens Noel Alec Burks live stream. I don't know what. You're well, hold on. About. Let's. To be fair, if Chris uh-huh. Haynes is reporting this, are oh, we no, sure we have that to the wait. Knicks aren't signing Colin so Sexton mean. instead? No, he's because... good. <laughs> hold on. Fr- All right, Chris Haynes. Uh, okay. When free agency opens on Thursday, the New York Knicks are expected to present Jalen Brunson a four-year offer in the vicinity of. One hundred ten million dollars. League sources tell Yahoo Sports. Now I'll take my fucking victory lap, Andrew Claudio. I, I, this is what I, this is what I predicted uh, several days ago. I, I always thought one ten was, was the number. Um, not, not for any information that I had. Just to be very clear, that was literally just me pulling it out of my ass. I just had a feeling that one ten would be the number. Um, The max that it could start at, if it's a if it's at one ten, was that twenty eight and change? Uh, and I mean, to, with with the set, so uh, uh, well, you do the math. I'll just I'll give the quick salary salary cap lesson. Um, NBA raises or uh, when you sign a player to a contract, uh, the year to year can only go up or down by so much. Uh, if a player is signing a free agent that uh, is employed by another team the maximum that they could either go up or down is 5% per year. So um, sign, for instance, for $100 million, obviously this is a a facetious example, the least that you could make the next year is $95 million. The most you could make in the next year is $105 million. So if Jalen Brunson signing a contract in the vicinity of $110 million, I believe the most number, that the, the highest that he could start at is 27 and change, maybe 28. If I'm if I'm not mistaken. Well, it just loaded. Give me a second and we'll uh, we'll make the math. Uh, Look look at this technology. Just it's just substandard. Um, I'll read the next super chat. Robert Cross GMAC. This is for you. Is your mic on? Oh, GMAC. Should, Should I bring mini hot dogs to the Patreon only town hall tomorrow? Also, why are these other fools not Patreons yet? Uh, he literally spelled said Patreons best value in NYK land. If you are Thank feeling you. Uh, generous and you want to join us on the KFS Patreon, we do non Knicks content there as well as a town hall, which is where we send out a Zoom link to everybody that is in our top two tiers the Ewing and Monroe tier. The link, uh, oh, and in the Zoom call, and we once a month we hang out and we talk about life and basketball and entertainment. You know, I've talked movies. Uh, inevitably, um, and then eventually I bring up baseball <laughs> as well. Uh, it's in the link that's right underneath this video. It's support us on Patreon. You go there, you sign up if you'd like to. Thank you, Robert Cross, for the shout out. Bring all the mini hot dogs you want. We can't enjoy them from where you are in the world, but you know, to uh, B Y O S, bring your own snacks. Bring your own snacks. Two things. One, this is an objectively hilarious tweet from SNY. With the trade, that's what I was. I literally have the graphic here. So, John, read it out. Read it out for people who can't. Who well, will it listen just says, to this later. Yeah. 
trade Knicks get and then underneath the Knicks get it's just nothing there <laughs> and Pistons get Alec Burks no as well <laughs> I just seconds. put it on the screen there yeah. you go that's yeah. great it's fantastic yeah shout so, out to whoever designed that graphic so here's uh here's the math for people yes thank you if it is let's say it's four years and 110 million dollars yep if it's increasing five percent raise it starts at 25.58 million dollars that sounds right if it's a zero percent raise, it's twenty seven point five million. And if it's descending by five percent, it's a twenty nine point seven million dollar. That's what I was wondering. Twenty nine point seven. Twenty nine point seven. So uh, you had the number after these moves at thirty three point something. Uh, let me go back to that. Thirty three point five right now. So that I leads. tell you, Jeremy, if, if you if you gave me a chip to bet right now on ascending or descending, I, again, I'm sh- I know that there's something I'm missing. I would bet on ascending because what? Well, but here's the other thing, though. What? It, it, it also quite like does he want a player option in year four when the salary cap goes up? If that's the case, then he'd actually make more money with a descending contract. Yeah, no, for sure. I just like I, I mean, three and a half million dollars is getting anything. Um, I, I, I let's hey. That's a lot of money to, to people like us. So <laughs> I, I didn't realize that in your palace and your, your oh gold my toilet, God. My and palace, toilet I'm like paper. A... But Christ. I wipe I wipe my ass with a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh Fritz Rich. I don't wipe my ass with a hundred dollars. Fr- Fritz Francois, finish your thoughts on Fournier in a sign and trade. Um no, I was just I was just thinking out loud in terms of Different different possibilities that they could do, getting under the cap, staying over the cap, this and that, and the other thing. Um, I will say this on Fournier. If you're if you're thinking about Murray, DeJounte Murray is a possibility for the Knicks. Fournier is the contract because they've Randall actually makes too much money uh for that to be involved in, in a in a Murray trade. Uh it's Fournier. Fournier is the you know, and that and you know, it's interesting. Like the neg- I, who who the hell knows what the negotiations with Atlanta and San Antonio are like, but my my guess, if I had to wager one, would be Atlanta was trying to parlay John Collins into uh, a, a being something of value to San Antonio, and San Antonio was like, no, we'd we'd rather just have the picks. We want to be bad. Uh, we, we, we want we want to be bad. We do not help us with that with John Collins. Um, Fournier, I could see the Knicks not posturing as if they think of Fournier is worth much. Yeah, um, I don't know if that makes any sense. It may not make sense, but like I could see them just basically offering Fournier as like a neutral salary. Anyway, that's, that's, I don't really have anything else to say on that. Um, one, just one thing with Fournier. Yeah. It's interesting that his number is very close to the combined amount for Noel and Burks. Like, I, I mean, obviously it was easier to break him up, but I'm saying in terms of like when oh, you're yeah. trying to dump him potentially into yeah, say, like the Boston TP, like they clearly had yeah. in mind of we need to get 18 to 19 million dollars out the door and they found it in two salaries. That they broke up versus one. I like it. Um, Dom, the dentist low post says uh, Jalen Brunson is worth 30 million dollars, according to many front office executives. If you're willing to do 25 still scares me. Why do the Spurs even want to trade DeJounte Murray? Um, just in regards to Jalen Brunson being worth twenty-five or thirty million dollars, we are we are living in a world where a player is going to sign a contract extension in this offseason, in all likelihood, that will have a sixty million dollar number on the end of on, at the end of the deal. Or what fifty nine point something? I don't I don't know what the hell it, it, Dame's extension is going to be. It's going to be very large. <laughs> it's going to be what the salary cap was like, you know, not terribly long ago. Um, we hear these numbers. We hear twenty five million. We hear thirty million. We think like, oh my god, that's it. and again, like the terms get thrown around. Max contract. Like, I, I want to say twenty five million or thirty million. It, it doesn't make a difference between one or the other. Or like. You know, it's not that much money. Like, yeah, it's a it's a shit ton of money if you're paying it to a player who is not deserving of it. Like Jalen Brunson, I I'm not sure what else he needs to show to to prove that he is worth a goodly sum of money. Whether it's precisely 
22 or 24 or 20 like that that's less interesting to me i i don't know how else to put it yeah i like again and what's the difference between a 23 million dollar player and 26 million dollar player there's, there again feasibly the way the way teams operate there is really no difference um there's no nothing else we could really say other than that. Um, another one from Melo from Toronto. Seeing this Noel Burks deal, you guys think the Knicks would be more willing to make a Randall deal, even if they won't win the deal? I my inclination is to say no, I don't. But well, let me ask you. We know the Knicks got extra picks for taking on eleven. Do I think that? Using one of those first to dump Randall is good business. I do not. I think it's terrible. It's, it's well, terrible it's business when you just business. did that contract. And I hate Randall. Well, strong word, but yes. Uh, no, hate, I hate him. You, oh, Jeez, okay. John. All right. All right. That's that's you. Uh, that's a it's more thing. just like the mindset of, are the Knicks willing to do that? Like, it, But then you also think about like, at this point, have they cut bait enough? But there's a huge difference between second round picks, which again, can be purchased for cash much more easily than first round picks can and using a first round pick to dump Julius Randle. They have a vision of the team. What exactly that is. Don't really even know in the interim. We'll find out very soon, but well, there is a prevailing thought of, would they be willing to do it? Maybe they would. I don't think they're done. Um, and the other thought the, just with, with, sorry, I'm going. Yeah, no, keep, keep going. Just with Brunson. With the 110, it's possible some of that money is bonuses. It may not. It, it could It could easily be fully guaranteed. I understand why it might be, especially if the Mavs said, hey, our final offer is five years, $125 million. The Knicks said, well, uh, our, we're limited to four years, but we'll pay you a little bit more every year. Totally understand that. Um, the question then is, is some, are some of those years, are those years going to have bonuses? I don't really know, but we'll see. Um, shout out to James Iceman for your contribution. Um Appreciate it. Rob Delusmo. What's up, fellas? Randall's game doesn't fit this team now, in my opinion. You guys think we keep Cam. Um, Randall's game doesn't... You know where Julius Randall is? Julius Randall's a six-man. He's a guy that you come in, he comes Ooh. in, he plays 20, 25 minutes a game, and he you, you surround him with shooting, maybe a team with a good stretch five. And if he's not the most efficient guy in the world, it's okay because he's your backup, you know, but he's going to make opposing defenses lives hell again, because again, he's playing against backups. So he's going to be able to have his way. He's going to be able to do all of his stuff for 10, 15 minutes a game. And that's what Julius Randle. That's what his role is. Unless he proves he, the jump shot from a, a year ago is, is still there, which remains to be seen. Um, so no, it doesn't fit this team because, and here's the other thing, and I'm going to have this in the newsletter tomorrow. So shameless plug for that. The Knicks run more pick and roll over the last two years. It's top table came board than any team in basketball other than Atlanta and Utah, Atlanta and Utah. One has the best pick and roll player in the league and Trey young. The other has a guy in Donovan Mitchell. Who's pretty good. Top pick five. And roll play. Yeah. He's up there as well. Julius Randall is by far the Knicks' high use, highest usage guy, does not want anything to do with the pick-and-roll. He doesn't want any, Obviously, he's not a pick-and-roll ball handler. doesn't want really anything to do with being a pick-and-roll role man. So if you factor that in, like, this is what the Knicks want to do. This They they want to just, they'd run pick and Tom Tippett would run pick-and-roll every possession if he could. Um, that's his M.O. That's not Julius Randle. And he certainly doesn't help you run the pick-and-roll because he doesn't space the floor. It's It's... You know, this isn't rocket science, which is why I, I really do hope you're right, Jeremy. As far as Cam, um, do I think they keep him? No, I've been saying for a while now. I think Cam's not going to be on this team come opening night. I just don't know where or what the deal is. Yeah. Agreed. And to your pick and roll point, the number one player in pick and roll ball handling last summer, or last season, was Jalen Brunson. Uh -huh. like that's that if the Knicks want to run pick and roll they got the guy to do it that's his bread he is, and butter he's been in the 90th percentile or above in each of the last two years um as yep. a pick and roll ball handler which it's pretty good you know um so we'll we'll see what happens uh another shout out to James Iceman um here Robert Cross Cutlets it's for you 
Yeah, I know. I don't want OB, IQ, or RJ traded. Now is not the time to aggravate me while I'm on the elliptical. <laughs> I'm just trying Hashtag. to push you. I'm just trying to push you further, Robert. You know, you could use a little bit more push energy for you. Thank Jeremy for yeah. whatever your weight loss goals are being reached. Yeah, there just go, call me Robert. a personal trainer. That's fine. For what it's worth, I'd be shocked if, I mean, RJ's obviously not getting traded. I'd be shocked if Obi got traded quickly, unless it's something there in a Murray deal, I, I, but I don't see that either. Um, Brian Lests. Hey, fellas, the obvious storyline is notwithstanding. How does the asset purge impact their plans for Rokas, if at all? I had to laugh. I'm sorry. I, I don't think. Not this year, at least. Yeah, he, he's not coming over next year. I think he's an asset. I think um, let's check back in a year. I don't, he, he's not in the plans right now. I don't think it, it affects anything at the moment. Would Sorry for that short I, and disappointing end. I just I also think if if he was good. I mean, I, I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert on Rokas, but like if he was like a guy that is worthy of being in the rotation, he'd be in the rotation plans. You know, well, hold, hold on. He. Because we've heard some reporting about how he doesn't want to come over here and sit on the bench, which more respect, more power to him. Mm -hmm. um, Good thing his team in Spain didn't just sign Tomas Sadoransky to play as well. <laughs> right? It'd be crazy if he was somehow in a, in a similar situation where point guards are, there are too many of them. Ugh, crazy. But I, he doesn't really fit in the plans as of this moment. You never know. But again, it goes back to the main point. If Brunson's coming on board, Brunson, IQ, Deuce, Rokas. They can't all coexist. And then I didn't even talk about Derek Rose, who's 34 years old. Uh, I, oh, we, and we saw there was some rogue um, reports about him, the Bucks potentially having interest, which would be interesting. Um, I'm not sure how that would work uh, from a salary perspective because they, they don't have a trade except traded player exception. And it would, uh, I think, it would have to be Grayson Allen and somebody else or, or Brooke Lopez, which. You know, or a three-team trade. You know, I, I don't know. I don't see it. Um, Manav Pawar, does clearing the extra cap space uh, help facilitate a sign and trade with Dallas, maybe involving Julius? Um, not with Julius. No. So the the issue with this the, the issue with Julius is not on New York's end. The issue with Julius is on is on Dallas's end. Um, so Dallas would have to send out, even if. Brunson signed with New York for the max, which is was it thirty point five or right thirty point five? So thirty point five. Um, it's still he still only counts as outgoing salary uh, fifteen point um, seven five, which is um, back temp nine nine and change away from uh, it's fifteen point twenty five, not seven five. It'd be 31 and a half it were 15.75 oh okay yeah in any case it'd uh, still be it's still be eight or nine I, i'm I, the math the specific math doesn't matter they would dallas would need, still need to send out a significant salary to accommodate julius randall coming back because of his uh julius randall's trade uh bonus unless he waived it but even then you'd still need to have outgoing salary and here's the other problem the Mavs don't have a lot of small fung fungible salaries in that nice sweet spot of like the Cam Reddish range. They have Frank at two, but then after that, you go up to, uh, I think, Maxi at nine. I don't think there's anything in between there. And then they, you get up they to They dealt Queen. a lot of them for Christian Wood. Exactly. Th th thank you. And yeah. then and then after that, you, you get up to Dwight Powell, who I'm sure they'd love to move, who's making 11. That's the guy that would need to go out to facilitate a Julius sign and trade, which... I don't think we should rule out, but it, it would be complicated. It would. And I yeah. um, just want to add one side note. Uh, Keith Smith tweeted this. I bet when we get the final actual details of Jalen Brunson's deal with the Knicks, it will look more team friendly than it does as four years, $110 million. That's been the history of the last few years with the contracts New York has given out. And Keith's right. Last year. Oh my God. New Orleans as well. Three years, $30 million. What the hell? Oh, it's third year is not guaranteed and they're unlikely bonuses. I still don't love it, but like I, I can live with it. That is potentially how it could be there. Andrew, let me know if I should read Yasha's text. Uh, Peter Gaffney. Hey fellas. Great, great work. If they're paying $30 million for Brunson, doesn't that seem high? <laughs> 
Like, now but, you have to because I react. I'll read it. Re- react to Peter's <laughs> text and then I'll read Yash's. Or is that the price they have to pay to make sure he gets here for four years versus the five Dallas can pay? Um, I mean, I guess this is another way of asking what what do we think Dallas's walk away number was? Um, well, I think that someone. Tweet. I there was a lot of tweets tonight. I apologize. I'm not going to give credit to the proper My person. God. Somebody else, not me, reported that Dallas felt comfortable with the Van Vliet number, which was uh, 22 a year. Four years, 85 million dollars. Yeah. Um. I, you know how 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 much how much wiggle room do you need to give yourself? And by the way, if anybody wants to say, listen. The whole benefit of having your the, the guy's dad on staff and the guy's like you know godfather running the team and the whole thing is like you shouldn't need to go that far and above. I respect that hundred percent. My my only counter is that again, as we've been saying on here, the money doesn't. I, I hate always saying the money doesn't matter, but it doesn't. It really doesn't matter in this scenario as ne- not nearly as much as you're thinking. And to Keith Smith's points, it, it's gonna probably wind up being better than you than you think. I just wish that they could have paid. Rick Brunson, four years, a hundred million dollars, and then sign Brunson, Jalen Brunson, for ten million dollars. Super easy. Um, and, and to, but just real quick, Mike Vorkanov just tweeted out, and other people have been pointing this out as well. Jalen Brunson would be the fourteenth highest paid point guard in the NBA next season if he gets trade if he gets the one hundred ten million dollars that Chris Haynes reported. Um, and then he goes into some other stuff about if he starts next season at twenty five million dollars a year. Again, I, I'm going to steal from tomorrow's newsletter, and I'm, I know this stat has been out there. Jalen Brunson paid 20 games without Luka Doncic this year. He averaged 21 po- or excuse me, I forgot the playoff games. He averaged uh, 23 or 24 points per game and over seven assists with really efficient shooting. Like, those aren't fake numbers. Those are real numbers. It didn't happen in one game or two games or five games. It happened at 20 game sample size. Um, Just a quick question. Are there actually people who think that Leon Rose wants to throw away his entire career as an executive just to get Jalen Brunson paid more money? Like it's not even his own son. Yes. His son represents Jalen and he, I'm sure gets money. Money's also not really an issue for that family. I think think (laughs) the reason why Leon Rose probably left CAA was to take on this challenge because this is, let's face it, no team, no front office exec has rescued this team in ages. And I think he wanted to take up the task. And he sees Jalen Brunson for the money that is on the market and what it would cost to bring him in to be worthwhile to at least get the Knicks to go from here to there. And you still have a long way to go moving forward, but it's a start. But yeah. everything's tricky. Like the beginning part, tanking, that's super easy to do, right? It's very easy to just try to lose games. Unless you're the Knicks in 2020. Uh, and you somehow don't lose a bunch of games. <laughs> and then you add Derrick Rose, and then you go on a really great run. And uh, then it's Andrew Claudio's greatest season ever. But instead, what you do, uh, like, you keep trying. It's the middle part. It's the part in between the, hey, we want to stop being terrible. And, hey, we've got all the best talent in the world. Let's go win a title. All of that is gray area. and feels really tricky. So this is just part of that gray area. We just got to get from, you know, point C to point, I don't know, Q to point <laughs> T, you name it. You name the alphabet. It's there. Okay. Andrew? Uh, um, so I'm going to do a quick reset because uh, I have no idea how much longer we're going to be on tonight, but chances are a little bit longer. So Just a little bit. Uh, we are approaching hour number two here on our emergency live stream that started as an Alec Burks and Nerlens Noel got traded live stream and has kind of become a the Knicks are most likely going to sign Jalen Brunson live stream. We have over 1300 people watching with us live oh, shit. on YouTube. Thank you to everybody for joining us to those who have already con- uh, contributed in the super chat tonight. We really appreciate your generosity. It always means a ton to us. Uh, two things. One, I want to apologize to those watching live uh, in the chat. We had some spam uh, jump into the chat uh, and start, dropping some links that people could go to i went to report them and accidentally pinned them for like five seconds which led to some embarrassment on my part and some hilarity on the chat's part i did uh, 
Yes. Uh, and enjoy. Was it porn? Like, yes. I was trying to be vague about what it was, John, but yes, it was. Don't. Well, that's and, nothing you should be embarrassed about. Yash, enjoy those links whenever you get to them. Um, speaking Maybe of. Maybe Yash is weak. Our, uh, our little group chat, John, with his, myself, John, and his law school buddies. I'm just going to para- paraphrase what John mentioned, I guess, in part one or a few minutes ago about whether he should read or not. Um, Oz asked if Grayson Allen is Ted Cruz's uh, long lost child. I have seen that raised before. Yes. Um, and Yash, in an equally hilarious moment, um, said that Grayson Allen is the Zodiac Killer's long lost child. And implies that for him to be Ted Cruz's long lost child, there's something that you have to do to have a child that Ted Cruz has never done. So as a result, there's no way he can you know be what? Ted Cruz's long lost child. Maybe the answer is in that porn link that you posted. Maybe, maybe. You search do you do you guys. Next up in the super chat, John. Dom, go ahead. Dom Dom the dentist is getting JB karma for not getting Fred Van Fleet. Hashtag shorties. Um Again, I, I just, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is like Fred Van Vliet wanted no part of, he didn't want to touch this franchise with a 10 foot pole. I understand the family connections, but I, I don't know. I'm still, I, again, maybe it's just because I'm a long suffering Knicks fan and I want to be happy about something. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to derive some happiness from that, that somebody, you know, because again, Jalen Brunson wouldn't, I don't, I don't think he'd put his career on the line. If he didn't believe that good things could happen, yeah, that's just me. He's gonna get paid regardless. I mean, yeah, he was gonna make a lot of money either way. He was gonna make a hundred million dollars no matter what. Yeah. Um, Steve Seville, would you consider it wise strategic? I'm, I'm sorry. By the way, the Knicks would have paid Fred Van Fleet two years ago. I know that, and he went and signed for a less money in Toronto. So take that for what it is. Uh, Steve Seville, would you consider it wise strategically to take an asset away from Dallas to potentially worsen their season when we own their pick? <sighs> what asset? Um, Brunson. Yeah, but I, I, oh, I was reading this as like take something else away in terms of a sign injury. But I mean, potentially, it, as I'm reading it, it seems like Brunson's an asset. Take it away, potentially worsens I mean, their season when we own their pick. The pick. Well, isn't the asset in this in this case? Yeah. I see what his question is because if the pick is less, like uh, this nightmare scenario for Dallas, if Luca yeah. gets hurt, they could potentially jump into the top ten, so the pick wouldn't convey. Uh, look, I don't think there's any universe in which Dallas is one of the ten worst teams in the league next year. We we uh, had it. We, we talked it. about. I know we talked we, about it. Anything you, you, like you said, the, the Warriors are an, an excellent example to my face. And now you're out here saying that Luca can't get hurt. And I obviously don't want it. Don't want him to have a healthy season. Just want the West to be really competitive and the Mavs are on the losing end of that. But um, yeah, I, I said it on the cap or no cap. That's one of the positives to taking Jalen Brunson from the Mavs. And in this case, that was a whole, that was all about signing trades. If you're just going to take him and they get nothing for it, how do they make meaningful improvements? It's really tough. They don't, I, they don't, they have, make, the, they don't have good salary. Unless they're trading Dorian Finney-Smith, and they're not doing that, no. um, they're, they're not they can't trade a pick until 2027. So they've got 2027, 2029. It's rough. Uh, this this hurts them, no doubt. It I'll does. Just, it. Go yeah. ahead, John. Go ahead. No, go ahead. The, and and the Knicks are in a good position here. I'll just add the. As much as I agree with John that this pick won't will convey this year, because I think the Mavs will be in the 20s, even if it does end up that they're in the 10. Steve, I did a little research today and found out for myself how long those protections last it'll convert next year or convey next year because it's top 10 protected for the next three years so for it to you to worry about when that pick will convey into two seconds uh luca would have to get hurt for three consecutive seasons for the mavericks tonight to end up in the top 10 which is which is not going to happen pick's going to convey at least knock on all the wood not going to happen how sure are we that this pick is even in the next possession Honestly, hours, 48 hours from now. I've wondered if I've it's not. looked at like the other assets they acquired on draft night, that it's another protected pick that could go out in the deal. I'm happy it didn't get used to dump the two contracts they dumped today, but you know, there's a bigger contract that, as you guys mentioned, is bad business to use a pick to move that may end up having to be used to move. Uh, but we'll see. Um, next one's from Jason A. Go ahead, John. Uh, are we going to get in trouble for tampering? 
The Bulls did. Maybe that's why they acquired all those first round picks. You know, they're gonna have to surrender one. So those were signing trades that were announced within the opening minutes of free agency. I mean, look, you could tell me they're gonna get dinged. I don't. I'm not expecting it right now myself. Isn't I was the thinking Knicks about this today. a sign and trade that might get op- announced in the opening of free agency? Well, hold on, Jeremy. Jeremy what were you I was say? thinking about this today. It's like the thing with what they basically had for uh, Lonzo and Lowry was they had a lot of, uh, with the investigation, they had to submit records and everything. All, all the texts, emails, whatever that was there. It was available. What happens when Leon Rose says to his son, Sam, Hey, Sam, could you pass the bread? By the way, how much money does Jalen Brunson want? Uh, uh, like, did they bug their home? Leon Rose is, is a professional. Leon, the professional. He has done this. Wow. Enough where he knows how to get through back channeling without it becoming an issue. 1984. Great movie. Here. It is a good movie. It's a, it's a, uh, a little Alita like, but it's, it's still pretty it's a good, good movie. Yeah, um, that was great. Uh, get Subi. How does Derek Rose and Fournier with three or four, say or four, or four first round picks for Donovan Mitchell sound? Look, I'll say this. Sounds great. Let's do it. It sounds wonderful. Um, <laughs> Donovan Mitchell had a very, very interesting birthday wish uh, Instagram Instagram post, right? Mm-hmm. To to his his beloved teammate Rudy Gobert yesterday or the day before. Um it is interesting to me. I'll say this. In listening to just podcasts and reading stuff, it, like it it I think it is pretty apparent at this point. Like Donovan Mitchell is not long for Utah. And like to me, and we haven't talked about it today because there's obviously other things overshadowing it, but like them hiring Will Hardy. And by the way, Will Hardy, by all indications, was is like looked at as like the next great young up and coming coaching. Co- yeah, he's a pop coach. The whole thing. That's also apparently not who Mitchell wanted. Now maybe the Jazz feel like, you know, Mitchell's going to love him in the whole thing. But it's pretty clear who Mitchell wanted, and 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 Bryant was not among the finalists. Uh, man, I could certainly see Danny Age moving on that sooner rather than later. Uh, but I don't. I don't. I, I just don't see it happening this this summer. I feel like the nickname for a Jalen Brunson, Donovan Mitchell backcourt would be the Lollipop Guild. <laughs> because other like, yeah, you got good. some wingspan with with Don, but that's a really short it's very backcourt small. with not much point of attack defense. I don't know. I we'll we'll see. Um. All right. Next up. Hold please. Thank Hold you. please. Brain XTC, any chance they're worse than last year given the stronger conference? What's your most optimistic and most pessimistic record next year? Um, if I could consider like the possibility that they might not be done yet and they could like do some other stuff, like I certainly think that they could be a top six seed. Um, in terms of what the bottom is. I actually don't think they could be much worse than a 35 win team. And I feel, I I don't know. I even feel like that's a little, I just, I really like Jalen Brunson and I feel like Jalen Brunson here with RJ, with the kids, my biggest fear is Randall. And is, is Randall that much of a issue that he's going to torpedo everything else that I feel pretty good about with this team. I don't know. I don't know. Tibbs figured out the spacing or figured out the offense just well enough two years ago when he had less shooting of any successful team in NBA history. Um, in, not history. In the last 15 years. Um, I think they're going to be pretty good. I kind of want to plead the fifth because they can't even field an actual team right now. Like They can <laughs> barely field five on five uh, with no bench support. So uh, sh- I'll say, I don't know. Yeah, I'll go 35 wins on the pessimistic side, and I'll say 47 on the optimistic. But there's fair. so much left that uh, that could change. Don't hold um, me. On that. 98 gut, no. <laughs> gut percent is that a star level trade happens this off season. That's from um, MB on the from Super MB. Chat. Sorry, thank you. Um, 
does DeJounte Murray count? Hmm. If so, 30%. Listen, Kevin Durant said New York isn't cool. The Knicks got are getting Brunson potentially. They're going to be cool. I'm going to say Durant. No, I'm kidding. It's, I don't know. Like, um, I'll say 10% because I just don't know what star is really on the market. Unless, like, are we somehow talking about Zion? Like beating all odds, and it's ridiculous how how that would happen. Like, I don't think it's gonna I happen. I don't think it's gonna happen either. So I'll I won't say zero. I'll say ten percent. Uh, House Flan, if we sign a trade for Brunson, can we fit in Levine? No, uh, we can't. Levine's not going anywhere. I'm sorry to report that. Um, next up, Jonathan Chaverez. Do you see Murray post New York, New York in an old blue hoodie? What do you think about that backcourt with those two? So here's the thing. We, we talked about a little bit earlier. I'll, I'll touch on it again. I just, it's tough when you have two guys who um, they are two, in terms of like your high minute guys, guys that played like a requisite amount of minutes last year um, at the point or the combo guard position, they were two of the top four, I think, maybe five, but definitely and again, I'm talking about like dozens and dozens of players in terms of how many shots that they took from the mid range. Both of the both of those guys want to operate inside the arc. It is not to say that they cannot shoot. Jalen Brunson obviously can. You look at a three point percentage. Dejounte Murray has made leaps and bounds behind the arc over, um, especially the last year. I, I wouldn't say it's a in a perfect fit in my eyes. That said, if you give me those two dudes, I take my chances. I guess. It, like, I understand the logic. I Like, I'll go back to what I said. It's, hey, Brunson, we want you to run the offense. Well, okay, we're also bringing in DeJounte Murray. I, I just don't know. I, I don't know how that would work. Uh, nor do I. Uh, Cala Pendergraft, Blazers fan here. Just want to say congrats on plan A succeeding. Thank you. Um, when was the last time the Knicks had a point guard as good as Brunson? Um, wow. Marbury? That was my thought, too. Two weeks of Jeremy Lin. It's, a, it's the correct answer. Marbury is the right answer. Yeah. Uh, Jules the Walker. How would you use the TPE, the traded player exception? Um. Well, probably wouldn't. Would probably just renounce it and sign Brunson. If it's two separate deals as being reported, then it's a nine million dollar one and a nineteen million dollar TPE. Can't combine them. You need them for cap space. Yeah. So I would renounce both of them. Go under the cap, and have Brunson. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's that's the correct answer. Um. Okay. Next up, we're we're. Moving along here, David Crockett just got rolled off the road. Can you guys recap? I hope you're okay, David, yeah. first and foremost. Uh, we love David Crockett here. Um, the Knicks moved Nerland Zowell and um, Alec Burks in a fair trade to the Pistons, in which they gave up second-round picks and a lot of money. And uh, all reports indicate they're going to get Jalen Brunson. So it's about One it. thing that I – and maybe it's a report and I just missed it. You have to send something back. If you're Detroit, whether it's a player, a pick, or a, the rights to a drafted international player, do we know what that is? No, that was yeah, reported. Yeah. Um, clarification from David Crockett. Um, he got got in off the road, so he, oh, okay. he's okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're, I'm glad you're. We're all glad you're okay, David yes. Crockett. Also, MenoF, this is the right above. You're lucky I saw this. This is right above David Crockett's clarification. They want me to do. Tibbs saying farewell to Noel and Burks. I will we'll do end that. With that. I will end with that. There we go. All right. Jacob reality. Now real. Now that Noel is gone, does all, does this all but guarantee Mitch coming back or are there some other options? DeJounte and Pirtle somehow or Mitch and a combination of Taj and Sims. Don't get crazy. I think the reporting has all been that Mitch is going to be back. I have no, we have no reason to not believe that. So I would expect that Mitch is going to be back um, for sure. Um, Next up, uh, Brian Lests. Sorry if I'm asking something Jeremy covered in his 187 hours of brilliant <laughs> Knicks cap scenarios. Thank you. 
I swear I've watched 54 hours of it, but I'm a slow learner. How would Brunson's contract impact Mitch and RJ's? It wouldn't. Would not at all. Would not one bit. Um, Jeremy can correct me if I'm saying something untrue, but Mitch right now, it's just about his cap hold, which is $1.7 million. And all of the math that's being you're being seen thrown around in terms of the Brunson numbers factors in retaining that cap hold, which gives the Knicks the ability to sign Mitch for a max contract if they want. So if they want him back, he could be back. And then um, RJ's, it's, these are just the beginning of his extension negotiations. He he he's doesn't it doesn't impact RJ one bit. Uh, um, if, Brian, yeah. if you're wondering with those players how it impacts them moving forward, uh, as long as the Knicks don't get hard capped, if that's an issue uh, for them, then they should be fine. But a lot of it depends on what we'll see in the next couple of days and then possibly the deadline and then right back where we are a year from now. So for now, uh, don't worry about it. It doesn't seem like a big issue, but we'll see. Um, Spencer goes, Goss, Goss, I always mess that up. Would you take Tim Hardaway Jr. for Randall? It's that's not it's not going to happen. Um, I would wouldn't. do it just to trade him a third time. I, so would I, but uh, the, the, the look the math, on his face, the math doesn't work on that yeah. one. We hired Brunson's dad as a coach and Tim Hardaway senior was signed as a scout. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, uh, maybe a different, maybe a different uh, trade down the line. I 95 bully. Can we get trust us on a t-shirt with the KFS logo? <laughs> Great idea from the draft show. Yeah, we can probably make that happen. Do you know when that idea got pitched John? It was when right before you went on your, your rant. Um, and I tried to add comic relief to it. And then I grabbed a pad and paper and a, a pen and pad. And then minutes later, things were escalated. So it didn't, didn't really work. So, um, um go Robert, ahead. Robert Cross, there was only one answer to that question. Hashtag 53 wins. I don't even know what question Robert Cross is talking about. Question. How many wins the Knicks would have? Oh, there you go. Could this make us worse? No. Hashtag 53 wins. There you go. Christian Cruz with Brunson on his way. Do you guys prefer Grimes starting at the two or RJ sliding to the two and Cam playing the three? <laughs> I, I keep the, the Cam stuff. I'm sorry. I just I don't see Cam on this team next year. I I that's just my assumption. I don't know. Um, if Fournier is here, I have a tough time seeing him not starting. If if Fournier is gone, I think Grimes makes a lot of sense with Bronson and RJ because you don't you you could. I think that's fine. I think that actually may I actually that makes a lot of sense uh with those two guys. Um just will Tibbs trust. Oh, I think he listen, I think he grinds think, to start. I think he I second think year. he will. If if Fournier is not here, I think he will. Right, but then are you if you're trading Fournier, you're probably bringing someone back. You're not just dumping a salary. So you're presumably getting a guard or a wing back. That true slot in at the two. Yeah, we'll see. Um, hmm. Uh, SB Gorilla back again, guys. As good as JB is in the pick and roll, I would love to see him in Obi work. The easy baskets would have Obi averaging 20 plus by Randall. Um, we just need to see Obi get a chance in the pick and roll. His, his, his numbers as a pick and roll finisher are not great, but I don't really care about them because the volume is so low. Um, and he always plays with a traditional center, which goes to a nice thread that uh, Yaya uh, Dubin had er earlier tonight. Tibbs has to be better this year. 100%. And, like, I'm not talking about the shit that most people get on him for, which is the minutes stuff. He just I think he needs to be a little bit more flexible. Uh, and that's if Randall's here or not. Uh, Parrish Duggar, it's Dame, Beal, Brandon Ingram, or Harden. None of the above. Yeah, I got to be honest. I don't. They're building <laughs> around Dame in Portland. Um, Beal seems committed to five years. I don't know how a backcourt of uh, Brunson and Beal works defensively. Ingram, I mean, the Pelicans are just taking their stride right now. He's a young guy. It seems like they wouldn't probably deal him. And then uh, Harden's 33 years old, and Daryl Morey just did everything he could to reacquire him. So I, I don't know. I don't think so. Ingram, I like I like that name. Um, Wilt one twenty eight. Who would be a better fit at the five outside of Mitch? 
I think it's Will T. Will T. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'll say this. I, mm, I, don't, I really don't want to say this. I just, again, just because there's been so much smoke over the years, I wouldn't be shocked if <sighs> Miles Turner oh, name came up again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that's want part of the, That's part of the jiggy game, Jeremy. Yeah. Yes. I gotta, I, I gotta stick to the bit. Um, I don't want him. I don't want him. I just it, it just wouldn't shock me if his name came up again. Um Neil Yaramain, could you see Mark Cuban being cute and built bidding on Mitchell Robinson just to get some revenge? He, he can't do it. Yeah, he doesn't have the money. He only has six million dollars. Also, I don't uh, know if I could see Mark Cuban being cute. He's got kind of more rugged features that are he's available. Aged. <laughs> he, yeah, he has. He really has. But no, the right. as John's saying, the hard cap is going to prevent them from getting Robinson. Look at this. I'm looking at. Uh, I think I see the spam. Yeah, John best Caesar. adult dating site. Uh, I, that you, sounds John. like a great idea. Thank you, John. I'm literally trying to report it. YouTube. I love you. We use your service a lot. Please don't put the word report. But below. Andrew. It's replace the best, pin chat. It's the best adult dating site. Oh, so that changes everything. Yes. Any I'm things. seeing the chat. We need moderators. You ain't kidding. I didn't realize that tonight was going to be the Wild West in here. Anyway. Um, this was great. Jeremy, you are incredible for hopping on. Um, thank you. Andrew Claudio, you are incredible. Thank you! <laughs> pin the porn site. No, freaking SJ wants to be a read. Hold on, Kevin Danachevsky. Thank Last you. Last one, always, Kevin. Buddy. How do you think Tim's compensates for JB's size? Also, I just want to shout out Noel. He was frustrating last year, but people forget his impact in 2021. I'll write a post mortem on Noel and, and Burks at some point. It won't be tonight. Um, I don't think Tibbs worries about his about Bronson size too much. He, the Knicks have never played a switch everything defense. I don't expect them to start now. Um, you know, that's not, I don't think that's where Tibbs worries too much. You know, Brunson's sturdy. He's okay. That's Aaron it. Brooks, Nate Robinson. Yeah. Again, I think that the whole reason why Tibbs said, oh, yeah, I like Alec Brooks' size is because he didn't want to say Kemba Walker is not a good player anymore. Can't be a starter. I'll tell you that was that was the least mean way of of getting across. And unfortunately, I just feel like since then, and it's not, not going to happen anymore. So it's great, but just people kind of ran with it. And the whole like, well, Tibbs loves size. Again, he he doesn't. He's shown in the past he's willing to play smaller point guards. He just size matters, Jeremy. Size does matter, but it's also the motion of the ocean. I, I thank you. <laughs> I, I got this, nothing. This pod is sponsored by whatever yeah, uh, whatever thing link, is going in the YouTube comments. Whatever links Andrew is reporting to YouTube in the yep. comments right now. Um, thank you everybody. Welcome for to New York, Jalen. <laughs> KFS after dark. Apparently, um, it's almost midnight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, some programming programming reminders. Uh, earlier today, John did a podcast with Fred Katz. We released it early just in case some news broke. And what do you know? Some news broke, making the Fred Katz pod that would have dropped 20 minutes ago irrelevant. So uh, if you want to go listen back to that, and there's some other stuff regarding RJ's extension, Julius Randle's market. He even makes an OB Toppin prediction that I think those oh, of us good. those of us in the OB Toppin hive will appreciate and enjoy uh john also as we were recording the intro we got the the tim mcmahon uh report that what would happen tonight would happen tonight uh so you can watch the video which ends with john uh solidifying himself in the doghouse uh i would encourage you guys to go watch that it's very funny uh, that was fun and then jeremy cohen tomorrow night will be on this youtube channel for the final edition before free agency of cap rules everything around me cream uh get the money dollar dollar bill y'all but you know stay stay away from the best adult dating sites um and then we will be here on free agency night uh, a lot of this is kind of concluded but uh who knows what else leon rose has in store 
Uh, so tune in on Thursday from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. We'll be on, well, okay, 5 p.m. and then we'll end at a certain point. Um, yeah, I think that's that's we'll all the program reminders for now. Yeah. I also, I'll just, I guess, say it because uh, read, read the Super Chat and then I, I'll, it's a bit of an announcement, but we've discussed it. I think at this point it's okay to say it. Um the there's, the last there's another pin super super, super chat blue, about the pin. Blue Diamond Gem, there's a lot of internal help to get Brunson paid. Yes. That is a true statement. Yes. I I wish my my family got me 110 million dollars that way, but they they fulfill me in other ways, so I'll take it. Um so I think you guys uh have been keep for those of you that have been keeping track of episode numbers uh, the most recent episode of Fred Katz was episode 499, which means the next episode we do will be 500. And uh, it's actually perfect that we will be live with all of you on Thursday because we're going to obviously talk about the Knicks and react to free agency and, you know, do the damn thing. But it's also going to be a mini celebration of 500 episodes of this podcast and this amazing community that we've built. Um, it's all because of you guys that you that were even able to do this. So um, bring your celebratory uh, pints and and drinks, and we'll toast to uh, half a half a millennium. I guess half a five hundred episodes of this of this show. Um, and I'll I'll say my piece then. But uh, I'm excited to to celebrate with with my Nick's Film School family on on Thursday night. Um, yeah. It's going to be fun. All right. We'll see you all on Thursday. Uh, don't forget to check Jeremy out uh, tomorrow night and enjoy the rest of your week in the meantime.